Hi everyone, um, I'm back and just wanted to share something from my travel kit, what I've been creating during my travels and also, um, you know, a technique which a friend or liker on my page asked how to achieve it. So I'll share the work I've created during my travel, uh, what I have um what is my travel kit? How do I? What do you use to tra uh, create it? And then I'll show a small technique. So here is one, uh, and this is one. I'll uh, some of the background techniques I'll demonstrate, not all, not the complete thing, but I'll tell you how to make it. Okay, and here is another one which I made. Um, so it's a ship sailing. That's the second one, and these are like six by six, um, on a mixed media paper. So it's part of my travel kit, and then there are some larger pieces which I've made. So here is one. It's. Um, I'm trying to hold it for you here, but if you go to my Facebook page, you'll be able to see some snapshots. I'm still learning how to add the uh, still snapshots to the video, but meanwhile, this is how I'm planning to show it. So this is another butterfly garden is what I call it. So these are things I made during my travel. And now let me show you what is my travel kit. So as I said, I have mixed media. I carry some mixed media paper. So this is the small one I carry, and similarly, I carry a large... Um, Cheetahs as well. Um, this goes in my, uh, you know, bag. But if I'm staying somewhere and I don't have to carry it, then this is 11 by 14. Is what I have in my hotel room or um, place where I don't need to carry it, but I can still create my art. This the small one is always in my bag. And then I have my box colors and supplies so I'll just do a sneak peek I have some sharpie markers I have um, a regular gel pen uh, some Sakura's jelly roll pen can you see that? okay um, jelly roll pen Sakura's a glue stick just if I find some found object, um, you know, some paper tickets or anything, and I want to put it on my paper or on my journal, and some aqua brush. Okay, and a very important thing I don't have acrylic paints, and I love to paint in acrylics, so this is what I carry instead the handy markers, the acrylic uh, with the acrylic inks. I'm going to soon upgrade them with liquid X, but for now, this is what I have Elmer's Painters Opaque Markers. They have acrylic ink into it and the ink is fluid. So I use them as markers as well as my handy acrylic inks or paints. And today I'm going to show you technique using these markers and the aqua brush, uh, which I used in this. So this is entirely made of aqua, uh, uh, you know, uh, the acrylic inks from these markers, and just this aqua brush. So let's go ahead and see what can we do with these two things. Very limited supply, just paper, markers, and your aqua brush. And let's see what can we do. You can extend it. I use these techniques with my regular um, acrylic paints as well and watercolor. But if you're traveling like me and still want to create an art, all you need to do is carry these two things or any sort of um, acrylic paint marker, I believe. This is the one I've tried, and once I have tried the similar techniques with Liquidex, I'll let you know. But for now, let's let's see what can we do. Okay, and where did I keep my paper? Yes, it is here. So, it's about mark making. I already have some marks here on the paper. 
So first thing I like to do is, I think you can do the similar techniques with watercolor paper equally well. If you want to use watercolor paper, but I am using mixed media paper. Um, so give it a try. So what I do is, first technique is just spreading my paper with some water and letting the water soak into the paper and you can see I have two drops here which fell and I'm going to create a small pool here of water which will be our second technique so one is I have a wet surface and second is I have a little pool of water you can see this little pool of water you can, when I move it okay see if I can get a better lighting for this Oops, sorry yes so here is our little pool of water and next to it I have just wet the surface and we'll let it absorb the water for a while okay before we can get into our other technique so with the wet pool what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some mixing effect here okay so all I did was I just touched my marker into this pool of water and let's see you might have to shake a bit your markers but then okay so you can see how nicely they mix up okay let's add a bit of green into it and here so you can see that how it goes and now here where we had put some water and the surface has absorbed the water we are going to try something which I call as blooming effect I love that okay so all I'm doing is holding the marker and you can see after I move it how it blooms around it So this is the second technique we can do. I've just touched it and it starts blooming. Now let's make some blooms with blue. You see how it spreads? And once it dries, it dries a little lighter because the pigment is absorbed in water uh, on the paper and So different colors will bloom with different density. Uh, they may not be all same, but uh, they don't look great. Uh, like I have seen normally the blue blooms more compared to the red and the um, this pink actually. And even yellow doesn't bloom that much. Maybe because of the ink, what it has, like the density of the ink compared to the water. So you can see the red is like a spot yellow is trying to bloom blue has bloomed most and green is still uh, slightly less so oh uh, this is how and this is the mixing I showed and I'll, for just the demonstration purpose I'm gonna wipe this and it leaves you can let it uh, dry here and it will be more but um, it will be like these things these are all dried darker compared to because I wiped it but you can control the intensity of the colors by wiping it or um, you know I just use a kitchen towel and just dabbed it and it picked up the colors um, I'm doing this quick because I want to show the third technique which is the dripping technique so now I lay a paper below um, my sheet of work and then what I'm going to do I like the blue uh, more so let's see what I'm going to do is just mark it somewhere and then using my aqua brush what I'm doing is spreading it and then turning it to let it flow and then you can manipulate how you want to flow by adding more water to it right and 
and the more water you add the lighter it gets so you you really decide how you want your background to look and once you have done these two or three techniques together uh, you'll get really beautiful uh, background um, and you really decide how light or dark you want it like um, I'll show you and I'll explain what I have done in doing and then you can keep rotating it the way you want just to achieve a different look um, and add water to it just tap it a bit if you want to and that's what you can do so this is what I did uh, with my painting and let me just show go around it uh, it's going to be 11 minutes and okay let me try how it goes with uploading so what I did was I created some light backgrounds and then once the light backgrounds were done by dripping and you know blooming somewhere it's bloom like you can see here it is partially bloom and then with the drips it has changed and um, similarly like blue is the one I have used more for the blooms so that's what I did a um, couple of places and then I put just some dots just you know just created some regular dots just like that and wiped it so that the color is light I just wanted a light background so that's what I did and then for the circles these circles I have created the pool of water and then um, let them mix around so you can see so what I did was I'm just demonstrating again pool of water make your pool big and just add some colors so here goes yellow here goes pink and then you can decide on how what kind of shape you want so this is the kind of circle then highlight it with black and that's where you're done so it's easy peasy technique uh, and i hope you enjoy it give it a try i am sure you'll get amazing results and every time you do it there are different results under it so and if you uh, what i've done here in this one is glued some paper so the texture of the uh, the water against the paper presses it like here and gives a different texture. So uh, that's the second thing you can do and control your uh, saturation with just a small dab of kitchen napkin. So you can control how much saturation you want in your colors, you want to make it dark, light, how do you want to do it? So just use your imagination. And here we are going to create a. See, this is another ray. So you create a bloom around the circle, and you can see how beautifully it has bloomed and um, created a circle, line circle, and the center is again mix of colors. So you can do those things and um, play around and um, do share your work um, uh, with me and I'll be happy to see what what new things you can achieve with it um, go to my Facebook page to see more of my work um, and I have been blogging on thingscrafty.com I'll post the links of both below um, about my Facebook page the creative page as well as um, the website where I blog and they have come up with free magazines so with amazing ideas you've got to see that magazine so go and watch things crafty and my page and bloom's creations um, and I'll keep sharing more ideas with you thank you bye